thank all of you ladies for joining us this evening and for um, being with us and telling us a little bit about your businesses. Um, tonight, Diane Gowdy is going to be our master of ceremonies, so I'm just going to kind of turn things over to her and let her move forward with um, the evening. Ooh, a short one. Good evening. This is a beautiful April day, and we're just supposed to relax and enjoy and have fun and honor some women who are very good at what they do. Is anybody opposed to relaxing for the evening? <laughs> All right. Open the master folder. This is the 16th annual Women's Business and Professional Achievement Contest. This started back 16 years ago with the idea that there are some very outstanding women in the community and we need to honor them. And a committee got together and said, let's do that. And th we had to sit down and decide how to divide all the careers in, that women were employed in into categories. And we did. And we broke it down into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven broad categories. And then after we got the categories, we had to go, well, how are we going to go about doing this? And we decided that the paper would be a good place. And so the Fairfield Ledger, and used to be the town crier, also worked with us on this. And they would print our ballots for us. And then any adult in the community could fill them out. So this is a poll. How many of you saw the ballot in the ledger this year? Very good. It's always in the ledger. And the other place where it always is, is in, and looks like this, is in our local financial institutions, like Libertyville Savings Bank, and First National Bank, and Iowa State Bank. And it's there for several weeks. And again, adults can vote. And then what happens is we get all the votes. And as a committee, we sit down and we count the ballots. Okay, this is all anonymous, and so this evening we can't say you had 207.3 votes. We can't say that because we don't know that. We also can't say that your boss voted for you, but your coworker did because we don't know that. And all we can say is you got the majority vote, and that's why you are the winner this evening. So that's a little bit about how this works, and we have every um, plan to go ahead and run this committee again for the 17th annual, which would be next year. So what do you do to have to win? You have to be outstanding. Well, was anybody outstanding today? Anyone? In any way? Did anyone give someone an outstanding smile and make them feel just a little better because they were there? Maybe, some of us. Did anyone say an outstanding word or sentence or phrase, making somebody maybe understand something or feel better about something? Or perhaps it was an action. Maybe it was just a hug, or maybe it was a thumbs up, or maybe it was a keep going, or whatever it might have been. So through our actions and our smiles and our words, we can be outstanding. Plus, we're supposed to be outstanding in our careers. How many feel like they really knew what they were doing today at work? <laughs> On top of things, they knew what they were doing, things were going well, people were following, people were leading, everything was happening. Let me think about my day. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sure that was part of my day, actually. But there were parts of my day that weren't quite that smooth. So outstanding may be 100% of your day, or it may be a small percentage of your day. But the point is, tonight we want to honor you, because at least part of your days, you are outstanding. And there's people in the community that want to vouch for that. OK? I would give you the definition of outstanding out of the dictionary, but I did that last year, so I'm not going to do that this year, so forget it. <laughs> so outstanding is just going above and beyond the call of duty. This year, we're going to call you up and we're going to share who you are and share something about you. And now, um, I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this, but I was thinking about Libertyville Savings Bank the other day. And 
quite honestly, I don't bank at Libertyville Savings Bank, so boo hiss, bad girl, I know. <laughs> but when I came to Fairfield, there wasn't Libertyville Savings Bank, okay? So I picked a bank based on who was here. And that will be anonymous, that will be a secret where I really do bank, okay? But I was thinking about Libertyville Savings Bank, and I was thinking, you know, they must do something right. I mean, you think about it, Libertyville. I mean, Libertyville, it's this big. I mean, a little bitty street, you know, and there's some people, and I mean, we're not talking a big place, but yet they had the power to make Libertyville Savings Bank, and it's been in business for years and years, and they had the audacity and nerve and courage to come to Fairfield, Iowa and build a branch bank, which is pretty cool when you think about it because we have pretty established banks here. And if I remember right, and I don't know my facts all the time, and I make things up sometimes, but <laughs> did Eldon have a Libertyville Savings Bank? Yeah, I mean, little bitty Eldon, Iowa had a Libertyville Savings Bank. And maybe there's another one. Is there another one? So when you think about that, that's pretty outstanding. Okay, so you may go, geez, you should get a life. But I went online to read about banks for a little bit, just in your <laughs> honor, in your honor. And there was this bank in North Bay somewhere or other, it doesn't matter. But I thought, as I was reading through it, I thought, well, this is kind of like Libertyville Savings Bank, or what I perceive it to be. The bank's atmosphere expresses a philosophy about creating a totally different financial environment for people an environment that is people friendly, an environment that has successfully created an investment and service oriented financial culture that focuses on helping people live the life they want, as opposed to selling the financial bargain of the day. Doesn't that sound like Libertyville Bank? I thought it was pretty cool. So whoever North Bay is, wherever this bank was, I just grabbed that little quote and I thought, there you go. So tonight, I would like to welcome the outstanding female executive manager, owner, supervisor of Libertyville Savings Bank. She is Jill Burnett, the chief executive officer. Please come forward. Okay. Thank you. Um, first, I'd just like to thank the people that voted and the women who served us tonight. We had a great meal. We thank them. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in a family of five, four girls and a boy. I have two children of my own and a wonderful husband who definitely does great things for me because I couldn't be where I was today without him. He gets the kids on the bus, he gets the kids off the bus, he gets the kids in bed, and he, he does it all. So that is a, a great thing for me and allowed me to get to where I am today. Um, graduated from Iowa State University in the mid-80s, went on to become a state bank examiner for the state of Iowa. Did that for five years and then came back to the family bank and started in the back room, did teller line, did janitor, did whatever <laughs> needed, and still, you know, we're still all in it today. So. Um, some things about myself that you might not know. I don't talk about the bank too much, but I love to ride horses. I love to hunt. I love to be outdoors. I love to fish with my son and to be with my family. So, and I take any questions or I don't know what else. <clears throat> so when you were young and thinking about your career, mm -hmm. did you ever think you would be where you're at today? No. Because? I didn't think that large. <laughs> no, that's okay. I did not think, no, no. And you're glad, though, it's turned out the way it is? I am glad it's turned out most days, most <laughs> days. <laughs> Whenever you manage people, it can be somewhat challenging. Um, but most of it's very good. So, it's, yeah, I'm glad. I just, sometimes you got to stop and think, you know, oh, this is where I really am. Because you get so busy every day just getting through. So. Don't some of your sisters work with you? Yes. Because My sister. of managing people, do you find mm -hmm. that a, a challenge? Working with family? Yeah. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Not necessarily, no. They've got to work harder than everybody else. 
<laughs> and there's not any issues. <laughs> but no, that hasn't been an issue for me. So, anything else? Anybody? Okay. That wasn't so painful, wasn't it? <laughs> See, she's alive. She's okay. And you were Jill Stump. Yes. Did I teach you? I'm thinking. What did you teach in the in the business department? Like, like it was before computers, because you're a little bit older. I mean, young. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't it before computer, like typing and. Yeah, so we had just gotten one computer in the department. I don't wow. When I went to college, you did computer on the punch cards, and you wrote Pascal programs. That's what we got. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it was awful. Yes. <laughs> it was awful. Yeah, you were, you were a little bit before we got big into it. Mm -hmm. I remember when we first got computers at the high school, I went in and talked to the principal and the superintendent. I said, we got to have them. They said, what are you going to do with them if you have them? And I said, I don't know, but everybody's doing it, and I just feel like it's going to be all it, and we're going to start going, and just give me one, and we'll do it. And so we got one, one. And we took, it took us two months to get every kid to do this little accounting problem on it, you know, and this little typing thing, but it was great. And now, of course, we're totally computerized, so that's great. So welcome. Now Kathy's awfully nervous because I said I have this spiel about Libertyville Savings Bank. So I'm not going to give this whole real spiel about Libertyville Savings Bank again because otherwise FPAC is getting a lot of free advertising for, you know, <laughs> Libertyville Savings Bank. But I understand that Kathy Fields is our outstanding female bank financial institution employer. I understand she's the head teller and the assistant cashier. And I was reading on the online, of course, and it said that this kind of person would arrange the money, balance the currency, cash the checks, count the currency, enter transactions, examine checks, process transactions, receive checks, but best of all, they resolve problems or discrepancies concerning customers' accounts. So I must ask you, has a customer ever had a discrepancy or a problem? <laughs> Maybe yes. <laughs> Occasionally. So she must have patience. She must have great interpersonal skills. She must be great with people. She must also be very accurate. Would you welcome, please, our recipient, Kathy Fields. Congratulations. Kathy. Thank you. There you are. And we have a one of our balance. Okay. Thanks. I tried to talk Jill into doing my part, too. <laughs> she wouldn't go for it. I thought that would be easier. I mean, she's my neighbor. She knows quite a bit about me, and I probably spend just as much time with her as I do my family. Being CEO, she should. She should, <laughs> she should know about me. <clears throat> um, I've been at the bank since 98. Um, when I came, I had no banking. I thought you went to the bank, put money in, you know, wrote checks, and. We all had a good day. <laughs> but Jill gave me a job, and um, I have learned so much there. And I enjoy my job. And, and as she said, I mean, that list, that's what we do, um, or what I do. Um, keeping the cash, enough cash for all three locations, um, and just watching the teller line and helping with problems and things like that. Um, I have my husband of 27 and a half years. Um, my, I have a son that's 10, he has a ball game tonight, and um, Ashley just turned 13, and um, we're seem to be busy all the time like everybody else, and I don't know what else. <laughs> Can I ask, with, with all the ATMs and electronic banking online, et cetera, et cetera, do you feel like the need for a teller is drastically different than what it used to be, or are you still in high demand? It has changed things. There's a lot more usage there. I mean, we see that every year, more usage of the ATM machines and, and things like that. And then the online has really gone wild. I mean, there's a lot of people that use that transfer money, make their loan payments, and all that stuff. So, but we're still really busy. <laughs> but I can't imagine, I mean, you know, that's that many people less that we wait on, too. 
but then you don't have, you know, your contact with your bank and your, you know, the old style banking. With a one on one. I think I'm interested in how much cash is all involved in the day. I don't know if anyone knows. <laughs> Um, we have the three different, lo you mean like the total between the three of them? I mean, we keep, each bank has its limits as kind of what they're supposed to keep, um, but we keep like $500,000 um, between the three locations is what we keep. And then whenever the other banks need, we ship out to them and if they get above their limit, <laughs> they're supposed to send money back to us. So, <laughs> so they don't have more in their vault than they're supposed to have. But and that's a real challenge because you never know when somebody's gonna stop in and you know, cash a you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar check and want cash for it. Um, of course a lot of times we try to discourage that and give them a money order, you know, if they're carrying it someplace for their safety basically. But um, it's it's interesting keeping the right amount of cash. <laughs> You never know. Is it more enjoyable working with like young kids just starting out with their banking or um, senior citizens or the average businesses or do you like all ages? Oh, they're all interesting and all fun. And we are, you mentioned, and we are a lot more casual I think probably than, than the other banks are and we want to say we're more friendly, more personal, you know. And I, you know, when I'm walking down the street even and I'll speak to somebody and of course the kids are going, Mom, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> I say, oh, just somebody I know. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's hard because, you know, even out in public people will, pe you know, come up and, and visit with us and stuff. And, you know, where I don't, I mean, where I used to bank, that didn't happen, you know. But we try to keep it a lot more personal. I think in all the years that I've been banking, I've only had one time where there's been an error in my banking. I'm assuming that tellers have to go through pretty extensive training before they actually become a teller. Yeah, there's a lot of training. Of course, the you know when there's errors, that takes you know a lot of looking and and things. A lot of times we're I'll talk about being PI someday because <laughs> of our investigating skills. Which, I mean, sometimes it can get, you know, really deep in the investigating, but we always find it, you know, what has happened and where it's gone and, you know, whether it's a mix-up with an account number or... or and is that something you have to do? A lot of times that ends up with me, yeah. And then a lot of times it ends up with, you know, Jennifer or Jill or, you know, somebody above me even. Sometimes it takes a couple of us to figure out the big serious things, <laughs> which we don't have very often. If somebody borrowed all of your 500000 of the three banks, they want a 600 what you going to do? I'm going to get some more money real fast. We can order money from um, Kansas City, from um, a bank in Kansas City, and we can get it overnight. I mean, it comes in the mail, comes in a bag, and they send it right through the mail. Okay. You might not have got a letter that was sent to you last week, but we usually get our money. <laughs> <When we order. laughs> and it just comes it just comes in a big white bag with them sealed up and that's the way it comes so we could get money the next day call an order but otherwise we have regular delivery once a week well my son when he was in college invested in the silver market so he cashes it in and from denver they send a bucket of silver, silver coins. Mm -hmm. We had to get the banker out of bed to take it, take it. Home and put it in his vault. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Sent him all this money in a bucket. Just in a bucket. And I mean, it wasn't a little bucket, it was a big bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to thank you all for the award and, and the nice evening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The best banking error that was ever made wasn't here in Fairfield, wasn't Libertyville Bank, but I'm a twin, and my name is Diane Gunther, or was, and I have a twin, and his name is Dwayne Gunther, so everything was the same except one letter. We both, of course, opened a checking account the exact same day, and all the money that he deposited went into my account. It was just like, yes, it was so good. 
But that's the only time there was ever an error. And I, I fessed up. I said, Dwayne, I got all your money. And, you know, it's probably $22 or some, you know, huge amount. We were just little kids at the time. So, so thank you, Kathy. Um, we have a couple recipients who their time schedule just doesn't fit with this evening. And so they'll be receiving it um, next month. Um, we are honoring, for an outstanding female city, county, state, and federal employee, we're honoring Christy Leisure. And many of you know Christy is the Recreation Aquatic Superintendent of the City of Fairfield. And I can't imagine going to the swimming pool that many times for that many years with that many kids and keeping my sanity but she seems to you know she seems to be real calm about it and everything but we are honoring her this year um so here's your trivia question you know what the park and recs um slogan is for the year i didn't know till i went on the web working hard so you can play and when you think about it, that fits the Park and Recreation Department, working hard so you can play. And their job is obviously to maintain, contribute, and enhance the quality of life through recreational programs for residents of all ages. And so next month we'll get to honor Christy. We also have another employee who works round the clock at the school, and she is our outstanding office administrative support employee, and that is Diana Peck. And Diana Peck is the shipping and receiving secretary for the Fairfield Community School District. And on Monday night, she's the little stopwatch keeper for the track team, and you just can't get her away from that because that's her baby. And so we are going to be honoring her later. I have the deepest respect for Diana. She is is so organized and so fast and just zip zip through all that stuff and handles all those truck drivers that swear they gave her this or that and I mean she just is out there and she writes everything down and you don't mess with Diana and I say that in a positive way I mean she really stays on top of things and I always feel guilty because she has this sign in her office and sometimes I do like to be a planner and I plan things ahead but sometimes it's just like I get this idea that oh, I've just got to teach the kids this and then I have this handout and it's kind of like I need it right now and she's got this thing on her door that says what makes you think your emergency is my emergency you know so she's like please will you run I mean usually she's a pretty good sport Okay, so now we are to our next recipient, who is a school employee. And I've known Gloria Countryman almost forever, maybe not, but a very long time because she honestly was the teacher of all three of my children. Every single one of them got to be with Gloria. And I know every single one of them is a good reader because of Gloria, because she is animate about reading. She really is. And lest she think that I'm just going to be sincere for her, you know better. <laughs> you know better. OK, now this is going to be a quiz. OK, you ready? I'm going to say what Gloria says to a parent. And you're going to think what Gloria really meant to say. OK? But she is trying to be very tactful and honest. OK, you ready? So she's talking to a parent and she says, your son has a remarkable ability in gathering needed information from all of his classmates. <laughs> he talks too much. He's cheating. Yes, all right, you got that. Okay, to the next parent, she said, oh, your daughter is so full of endless energy and viability. We'll stand their seat. <laughs> They're a hyperactive monster. <laughs> Outstanding and fantastic imagination, unmatched in his capacity for blending facts with fiction. <laughs> he's a storyteller. He's a liar. See, she's so smooth. She just says things, and the parents are going, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now she's talking about this student called Margie. Margie exhibits a casual, relaxed attitude towards school, indicating that high expectations don't intimidate her. She do She's lazy. She doesn't do a darn thing. You guys are doing very good. Gloria, you wouldn't get away with it if you called them. I can see that. Um, just two more. Your son Nick thrives on interaction with his peers. 
He talks too much. He never quits socializing. And lastly, your son John enjoys the thrill of engaging challenges with his peers. He's a bully. He's a bully. But now seriously, if I knew what Gloria really would say, she wouldn't, you wouldn't fade into that like that. You would level with the parent and you would say in a nice way what they needed to hear because I know that's how she does. I also love Gloria because her classroom is a disaster, just like mine. It's just awful. It's just got papers and projects and because she feels like, as I do, our job is not to have a perfect desk. Our job is to be with the kids. And if you want a perfect desk, then go get somebody else. I'd rather be with the kids or, or inventing curriculum that, that's exciting for them. So would you please help me honor the outstanding school employee, Gloria Countryman. Congratulations, Gloria. Thank you, Diane. Thank you to the BPW for this honor. I greatly appreciate it. I was speaking of the messy desk, Diane. A teacher that I admire who has since passed was uh, very adamant about her career, too. And she made the comment once. She said, a messy desk is a sign of a good teacher. And I thought, boy, I must be really good. Because <laughs> my desk is a disaster. My husband teases me because he found some... Uh, uh, partitions from old office uh, supplies from a mutual that he works with and I have sides on three sides so nothing falls off anymore so that's good too <laughs> he's always teasing me about nothing falls off a little bit about myself I was born here in Fairfield and raised about four miles northwest of Fairfield on the family farm and graduated from Fairfield High School I went to country school for seven years, kindergarten through sixth grade. In fact, the school I went to sixth grade in is sitting on the fairgrounds. So I have familiar and good memories from that. I've often felt that my one room school days prepared me for middle school and for high school. When we first moved in, it was the time they were consolidating schools. And so those of us who were coming in from the country school sometimes were looked upon as if we didn't have the education the town kids did we could outsmart them any time because we, we had sat and listened to classes from kindergarten through sixth grade all the way through. And so we really had learned a lot of facts. And so we, we were able to compete. I went to college at uh, Kirksville. It was, it's, I see, it started out at Northeast Missouri State Teachers College. And as a sophomore, it turned to Northeast Missouri State University and is now Truman State. So uh, you can call it whatever you want. I went to school in Kirksville and have my uh, graduate degree from University of Iowa. I have taught 34 years. Phil and I were figuring this out before I came in. Um, two years in fifth grade. One, one of those years was at Waco. That was my first year of teaching. You talk about challenges. That year, the superintendent's son, one of his twins, was in my classroom and I caught him cheating. Talk about a decision about do I tell him or not. I did and um, he thanked me for being honest, but I was scared to death about talking to him. So those are just challenges you meet as you run into different situations as you teach. I've taught at Penn School for 33 years. 32 of those have been in second grade. And I'll have second graders say to me, well, why don't you go to third grade, you know? <laughs> so, well, you know, I haven't learned everything I need to know in second grade yet, because there is always something new. So. I enjoy my job most days. I'm like everybody else, 99.9% .9 of the time you enjoy it. Teaching has changed. The challenges are much different today than they were when I started teaching. But yet I've also seen things go around. They just have a different name, different uh, techniques, different things that we're expected to do. Those of you who have been involved with education law, you know that you've seen it go around. It just has a different title to it now. I'm married to my husband, Phil, be 35 years in June, and we have two children. Erin graduated from Wartburg with an education degree and works for New York Life, and our daughter, Sarah, has an education degree from Iowa State, and she teaches in the Des Moines Community School District. So both of our children have an education degree and are using it in different ways, so any questions? I'm very proud of being honored. I, I enjoy my job, and it's nice being honored for something that you enjoy doing.
What's the hardest part of your job now compared to 10 years ago? Counseling. Counseling kids. Um, so many kids come to school with so much baggage anymore. And we're talking seven and eight year olds that should not have that kind of baggage. But they do. And so at many times, I'm not a teacher. I'm a mom. I'm a comforter. I'm a counselor. I'm a referee. Uh, teaching is a job that you have to be very flexible in. Because if you're not flexible, you'll go nuts. And that's what I've advised people that I've worked with as student teachers. That the best thing you can be as a teacher is not only know your curriculum, but you have to be flexible. Because there are too many things that hit you. You have to make a lot of on-the-foot decisions every day. And you never know what's going to walk in your door. You never know what kind of a mood children are going to come in. Sometimes they're just as happy as can be, and you have some who arrive in tears. And we're talking small town Fairfield, and it happens here too. So that's, that's the biggest thing I've noticed is a lot more emotional baggage than we had even 10, 15 years ago. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. That is so true. And it's sad. I mean, because you have second graders. I have high school kids. So you expect it more at this level, but at that level. And sometimes I look at them and go, why should they care about whatever my topic is? You know, because I know parts of what they've already been through that morning. And it's like, it's very hard. And, it's, and it takes a lot of energy to, to maintain the flow of, of the classroom when you know that's going on and you need to respond to all of them. But it's certainly a, a great profession that we, we get to have if we can. Okay, Claudette. What are we gonna say about Claudette? Claudette is one of the sweetest ladies I have ever met. When I come in with my overdue books, <laughs> she never acts like, well, it's obvious you have an overdue book. Again, she just very politely says, do you want to take care of it today? <laughs> I mean, I appreciate that because I really don't need to be reamed for my overdue books. I know I have them. I always have them. But you know what I always say? That's some of the best spent money because I'm giving it to the library. And so go buy a book. What can be better than a book? So I really don't even yell at my kids about their overdue books because it's a good donation. Phew, got that off my chest. I always have overdue books. Just a problem. Okay, now you might go, oh Lord, did she read about the library or whatever? And I did, I did. And I'm very proud of the library because I was on the Board of Trustees for 12 years. And so I went there to a lot of meetings. So I really think we have one of the finest libraries around. And I think we have a great collection. We have great staff. And, and Claudette is certainly an example of that. Okay, so here you go. You ready? I found this site where it was called Weird Reference Questions. And these are supposedly true. True people actually ask these questions. Someone supposedly came up and asked the reference lady. They said, do you have any books here? I mean, couldn't you just see Claudette just calmly going, Yes, we do. We have many books here. I mean, she won't laugh like, for God's sakes, what do you think? Of course we have books. I mean, she would just be a lady and handle that question. Supposedly, there was this library where it had a big sign, reference desk, you know, over the top. And you can just imagine Claudette under the sign and someone coming up, and they honestly asked, where is the reference desk? I mean, and the sign is like right here. And Claudette would just go, well, it's right here. Could I help you? She would never embarrass them by anything like that. Um, I have two more. How do you think Claudette would do for this? Someone, supposedly this is true, came up and said, I'm looking for information on carpal tunnel syndrome. I think I'm having trouble with it in my neck. <laughs> now, would you laugh or would you make that person feel like, well, that's an intelligent question. Let me help you. It says it's true, and you know the internet, everything's true on the internet, you know, my gosh. And the last one is, supposedly, someone like Claudette was sitting at the first floor reference desk, checking out books, 
And someone came up to them and said, is the basement upstairs? <laughs> and Claudette would be enough of a lady that she would handle that well. So Claudette, thank you for being a librarian for me forever. And I would like you to be honored as outstanding female service provider, Claudette Dorrell. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. When Diane called me, I was so surprised. And I was deeply honored and humbled because I know that I don't represent just myself, but also all the librarians through the years who have served you with courtesy and friendliness and been very helpful to you. I moved to Fairfield 17 years ago, and I began working in the library about two months after I moved here. And it's just been a wonderful way and a good place to meet and get to know this community. Um, about myself, I have a, a wonderful husband, Greg, who's the most kind and considerate and gentle man. And I have a daughter, Kate, and three grandchildren, but they live far away, so I see them very seldom. I like to read, I like to play the piano. And when Diane first um, was here saying weird reference questions, I could tell you weird things we have found returned in library books, except, <laughs> except I really can't say it. We taped some of that. So, so the library has just been a, a very fun place to work, just a place where I have met a lot of wonderful people. Do you have any questions of me? As a computer teacher, has computers helped your job or made a problem? You know, you'd think that would make the job easier, but we've just stayed so busy that I don't know how we used to do it in the old days where we had to find the card for that book and put it in the pocket. You know, and now it's just so simple to run it, run it under a scanner. Um, and when we had to find reserves, we had to do it all by hand, looking for what that person wrote on that piece of paper and look through each day's cards and paper clip that reserve on the back of the card. You know, and now it just pops up on the computer when a book is on hold. So you'd think it would make our jobs easier, but somehow we're busier than we ever were. Don't know how that is. Maybe it's because we offer so many more things now than books. You know, we have DVDs and videos and books on tape, books on CD. I suppose it's just because we have more material. You have more people using the library? Becky would know the statistics better than I. I, I don't know, but the library here in Fairfield has always been a busy place. And the thing that makes me proud about it is it's, it's also a community gathering spot for people. And I've always enjoyed that. It's not been a place where we have hushed you. Um, we want you to, to be here meeting with other folks and talking about the books, talking about things you're doing. So. Visited 179,000 times, and our circulation was up over 220,000. So we're we're busy. Thank you very much for this lovely honor. Now I just feel like I have to say this. We went to middle school orientation because my baby boy is going to middle school. And they said at their library they have finds. you know what they find at the middle school? Because they're just trying to teach responsibility. It's two cents a day. Two cents a day if you have an overdue book. And they kind of keep track. And when you really get bad, which is 50 cents, then you can't check out books till you either bring some back or you know you pay your big fine. So. I thought that was kind of interesting. Two cents a day, wow. I'm sure we'll have millions owed to them, too. I'm sure we will. But at least they're reading. They're reading. And that's what's important. And thank you, Mrs. Huggins, for coming so that you could see your two employees. I don't know if Gloria mentioned it, but she also works at the public library in the evenings because she has nothing else to do. And so she just thought she'd hang out there. But that's that's very neat because I'm sure it's it's 
part of the same process. It's education and reading and working with people and children and so that's pretty cool that two employees that got this honor tonight and their boss is here with them. That's very good. <clears throat> okay. I have to tell you this too. Mitchell asked one question at sixth grade orientation. He said, is there a limit on how many books I can check out? So I'm going to be on the corner with a cup paying two cent fines. I know it because they said there's no limit here. You can take as many as you want. Oh, no. Okay, Pam, are you nervous? Haven't been all night. Have been all night? I remember you in school, Pam Craft. I do. Remember me, but not Jill? See, I don't know if I had Jill. I remember Laura, Laura, your sister, but I don't know that I had you. I really don't, but I had you, Pam. And I can see you sitting there with this brown typewriter. I still can see the typewriter. It was pre-computer days, but we're young and fun. But that was pre-computer days. You were quiet then. Are you quiet now? Still quiet now. You loved the outdoors then. Still do. Um, you are the Fairfield City Park Superintendent. And all I know is she's the lady that drives the little thing around and waters those flowers all <laughs> along the square. Now, don't you feel like it's a dead end, like I'm never going to get done because they're just going to get dry again, and then you have to do it again the next day. Don't you feel that way sometimes? <laughs> Most of the time. But now I have someone else that waters, so. Oh, you're not the water lady anymore. But seriously, our square is beautiful. With our flowering plants, it's an inviting place for our community, for our patrons, for our visitors, and that is very cool. Supposedly, I had to look up a definition of what the Fairfield City Park Superintendent was. You are the protector and restorer of our native and planted environment, and you are a steward of common areas, including all of our parks. Did you know you were all that? I didn't know that. Pretty, pretty, pretty good, wasn't it? That's what it said, you were. And so our parks are certainly beautiful here in town, and, I, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you want to say about the process. Please welcome our outstanding female in a non-traditional career, Pam Kraft. Congratulations, Pam. Thank you. I want to thank you, too, for this honor. Um, yeah, I, I've been nervous all day long because I'm I was sorry. just, it's your fault. I should have came up with an excuse. <laughs> but anyway, um, I grew up in Germanville on a on farm, a farm girl, and I can remember my dad yelling at me, or not really yelling, but wanting to know why I was weed eating around all the old farm equipment. He just couldn't figure it out, and I guess maybe it was just a sign of what was to come. <laughs> so I went to college to be a phys ed teacher, and that didn't quite work out, which, you know, listening to teachers sometimes, maybe it's a good thing that it didn't happen. Um, I love my job. I've been working in the park system since 1984 as a part-timer. Um, in the winter times, I would go to work at the recreation center, so I was always involved with park and rec, and in 1999, that's when I took over as park superintendent. I love my job, couldn't ask for a nicer job. And you're always doing something different, you're always outside. Um, yeah, and we take care of lots of things, flowers. Um, and yeah, I did give that job up to someone else. So that was, it, it, yeah, every day in the hot summer sun. It was like you knew you were right back up there in the morning unless it rained. So sometimes you would pray for a lot of rain and not <laughs> get so, are there any questions? Go ahead, Diane. What's the best Diane. part of your job? Best part of my job? Um, I think the best part is just being outside. And like I said, you're, you're always doing something different, whether it's with, you know, with flowers, with trees, with the grass. You know, and you're always meeting different people in all the different parks. There's always somebody different that you get to talk to or, or meet. So, what do you do in the winter? Nothing. No. <laughs> No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> we, um, in the wintertime, there's just two of us. There's two full-timers, and we do a lot of snow removal, ice removal this past year. And um, 
We pull in a lot of the park benches, and I paint and grind, sand the, the park benches. And the other guy that's there, he also, we bring in signs or little spring animals, little playground things that we can bring inside. And then it's just getting all the equipment ready again for the following year. Do you do the mowing too? Uh-huh. How many Easter eggs have you been finding? We found a few out of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. How many employees do you have in the summertime? Um, in the summertime, I usually don't start getting help until high school and college kids start showing up. But right now, um, like I said, there's another full timer, and I've got uh, another lady that works most of the year round, except in the winter, and I've got another guy that works two days out of the week. So right now is when we need all the help, but we don't get all the help until school usually gets out. Um, I usually get four high school or college kids, so there's usually four more in the summer. Probation used to send them to that to do work. We used to have some of those, and sometimes it was more babysitting than watching them. Yeah, so so sometimes it's almost because. And the other thing is, we're getting so much more to do that you you know you're not sure if you can leave them by themselves, so you're. You know, so, but we have a few West Community Service every once in a while that come in, and, and that it does make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, you did very good, Pam. Well, Compared to this all quiet girl I had in high school, you were just fine. You must have taught me well. Oh, that must have been it. I just taught you how to type. 42 words a minute, I remember. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe it was, that was on the opening day, and then I think it was like 85. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this brings us to the end of this part of our um, Appreciation Banquet. We usually we have a chance to go ahead and introduce the other members that are here and, and what they're doing. So, Patty, would you like to introduce yourself and where you work and what you do? Absolutely. My name is Patty Adam, and I'm the marketing director at Harper Brush here in Fairfield. Um, I've been there 22 years, so I've been there for a while, and I am currently president of the local BPW. I'm Jill Dahlstrom, and I'm the owner of Yummy's Gourmet Cakes in Fairfield and also in Coralville. I didn't know that's who you were. I'm very glad to meet you. How's Yummy's doing? Very well, thank Very you. well? Yeah. You've had it, what, for about a year now, or? Um, I've owned Yummy's, it'll be four years in June. Four? I mean, yep, and then um, I've had the one up in um, Coralville for three years. Mm -hmm. So lots of fun and exciting things going on. Well, good. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. We met these two ladies. Vivian? I'm Vivian Hammes. I'm on my second career. <laughs> First one I retired. Uh, I am now, uh, um, I check uh, bills for Primus mm -hmm. out west. Mm -hmm. And so I've been with them seven years. I was with my other job for 24 years. So then I was the senior citizen coordinator for all, all the senior centers in Jefferson. Mm -hmm. I remember when you were that. But I got bored going home. I mean, being home. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement mean, wasn't for so you. <laughs> Come over. Let's write down some names and addresses. Come over. Anybody else? Anybody else? I took another job. It's never that clean. I'm Marie Kiefer. I'm uh, the person on the phone at the radio station. The work that I do programs all the commercials and all that good stuff. Thank you. Phyllis? Hi, I'm Phyllis Baum. <clears throat> I'm a retired teacher. Good. Vicki? I'm Vicki Kiefer, and I teach at Mother's Day School here in Fairfield. Thank you. Diane? I'm Diane Whitney, and I teach Family and Consumer Sciences at for six more weeks, I might add. Oh, five more weeks, I might add. <laughs> Are you counting, Diane? No. <laughs> Mrs. Huggins? Um, I'm Becky Huggins, and I'm your director of the Fairfield Public Library. Um, well, we're in the process of um, bringing in a new automation system, and we're 
jumping through several hoops to bring the library to full accreditation. In this uh, state, you have three levels of accreditation, and currently we're at level two, so we're working to bring ourselves to tier three. Very good. Good luck. Good luck. Third. I'm Fern Lawson. I'm retired. I was director of the medical records department at the hospital. Thank you. I'm Phil Countryman, the better half. <laughs> you must be something then, because I know Gloria, and if you're better than Gloria, you I really must be something. <laughs> I work for Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company for, this is my 32nd year with them. Are you figuring it out yet? Mm -hmm. Are you? Good man. Thank you. I'll get it figured out someday. All right, we'd like to say a special thank you to Diane Whitney because without her this whole thing would not occur because she took care of all the ballots and made a lot of the arrangements, so thank you very much. We'd also like to thank Suzanne Kessel, who is here from FPAC this evening, taping for the community's pleasure. It's always nice to have community people on the streets say, we saw the BPW Awards, that was pretty cool. Suzanne, do you have any idea when this might broadcast? I think it's this Friday at... Okay, this Friday at 7 o'clock, you might tune in Channel 9, FPAC. And as we leave this portion of the meeting, may I just encourage all of you to be outstanding in whatever way you can. Thank you for coming.